Hey, I want to say thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, if you haven't already, I would encourage you to go back to our uh, video from last night, our live stream of our Wednesday night Bible study that Jeff Randall and I have been doing together and watch that before you begin this. I think it will help this to make a little more sense. Uh, don't necessarily have to, but this is kind of a continuation of a thought that I began last night that I kind of want to carry over into um, just a short study today. just want to say thank you, though, for uh, joining in and being a part of this devotional um, with me. So I want to look at Mark chapter 9 tonight again. That's where we left off last night. We looked at the story of Jesus healing the demon-possessed boy right after he had come off the Mount of Transfiguration last night. But tonight I want to begin in verse 38 and kind of look at a theme that is carried through here. In Mark chapter 9, verses 38 through 41, we see John begin to question Jesus. He says, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Truly I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. As I think about this text, as I was reading through this text and thinking about it in the context of our current climate, our current uh, social situation, it hit me a little bit harder, a little bit different than it has in the past. Um, I felt like this was, was one where Jesus just it hit me right in the chest with this one. Um, this phrase here is one that, that really got to me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Mark chapter 9, verse 40. Whoever isn't against us is for us. In a climate, in a social scenario, in a social setting where everything is trying to be devices, divisive, where we are constantly trying to find our foes, our enemies, those who are against us. It hits pretty deep when Jesus says, quit looking for all the differences and find what you have in common. Right now, I think our, in our climate, we are very focused on finding who's against us. We are um, not so concerned about uh, how we can share the gospel with those who are different from us, but instead we're concerned about, I don't know if I can work with them if they're Republican. I don't know if I can work with them if they're a Democrat. I don't know if I can work with them if they're from a different uh, socioeconomic background than I am. I don't know if I can work with them if they're different than I am in some way. I don't know if I can work with them if they are big time mask proponents. I don't know if I can work with them if they're not mask Wears. I don't know if I can work with them if they're not exactly who I want them to be. I want you to imagine for just a moment, and this is a scary thought for me, but I want you to imagine that the church here at Bella Vista, the church today, the church wherever you are, the church that, that you are a part of, was the church of you. It was a church full of people exactly like you. However many people are, are members of that congregation, however many people actively attend that, um, that congregation with you, I want you to imagine that all of them were just like you. Every single one of them was identical to you. I want you to, to think for just a moment about how long that church may last. Think with me. The, uh, would the church really last if the church here were a church of, of 200 or 300 Parkers? And I know when you think about it from my perspective, it's pretty easy for you to answer that question, but put your name in the blank. Put your name there and say, would a church of, of two or 300 or 1,000 or 10,000 or, or, or 40 or 50 of me last? And I think that there's a pretty simple answer to that question. I think the answer is, is quite simply no. The church of me couldn't last. That's why the, the church isn't the church of me. It's the church of Jesus. It's a church where it's his body, where many members come together and work together, as we see Paul talk about so passionately in 1 Corinthians. It's many members coming up that can't do what many of the other members can to make up one body that as a whole works together ideally flawlessly, but as we know, that rarely is the case. 
But I feel like so often in the way that we interact with others today, that is what we are seeking as a church of us. Because we want to close our doors to those who don't vote like we do, to those who don't view the world through the same lens that we do, to those who don't worship in the same way that we do. If you don't uh, believe the same things about the, the birth, the life, the ministry, the death of Jesus that we do, oftentimes we want to shut our door and say, we can't even do ministry with you, even though our core beliefs are the same, even though we are both Jesus followers, even though we are both disciples. If you're not willing to follow him in the way that I follow him, then this isn't for you. I don't want to be a part of, of worshiping with you, of being called a church with you. But Jesus looks pretty, uh, pretty harshly downwards upon that as John says, Jesus, I just want you to know there were some people who they, were, they claimed to be your followers. They were doing a good work, but because I hadn't seen them around before, because they hadn't been a part of what I deemed to be the gospel, I went ahead and told them to stop. I went ahead and told them that this wasn't for them because they weren't really your disciples. If they weren't going to do it the way I thought they should, they weren't really disciples. And Jesus very quickly puts John down and says, no, that's, that is not how this is going to work. We're not simply going to tell people that they can't be a part of my church, of my body. We're not going to tell people that they can't be a part of my mission and my ministry just because they don't look or sound or act in the way that you do. But instead, we're going to rejoice when somebody is working with us, and we're going to partner in the gospel with them, even if it's a way that maybe makes us a little uncomfortable. Because what Jesus says is those who are not against us are for us. It reminds me of also of Paul's words in Philippians, where he says he rejoices that the gospel is being preached even by those who preach it for bad reasons. Because Paul says, well, I, I hope that they turn from the air of their ways. I hope that they uh, really see the gospel in the same light that I do and the same light that, that many Christians do. I'm not going to bicker back and forth with them about the preaching of the gospel because as long as gospel is being preached, Paul was happy. And Jesus says, as long as people are acting and working in my name, as long as ministry, as long as mission is being done, Jesus was good with it. And I wonder what the church would look like today if we had two or 300 people here who had that same attitude. If we had five or 10,000 people at the church down the road who had the same attitude. If we had 40 or 50 at, at the church down the road who had the same attitude. I wonder what the church as a whole, not just the church here at Belle Vista, not even just the church here in Northwest Arkansas, not even the church here in the United States, but the church globally would look like if we would put aside our differences and go change it. And the part of this that I struggle so much with, the attitude that I have that really needs to stop, is that so often I read a scripture like this, I read a passage where Jesus is telling us how to live, and I say, you know what, Jesus, I, this is something I need to work on. I need to, to move a little bit toward, closer towards the center I need to quit being so stuck in my way and move closer to where Jesus is. But I also look and I say, but you know, there's some people on the opposite side of this. They need to come a little closer as well. They need to meet me in the middle. I, I can't go completely over to where they are. We gotta, there's got to be a little bit of movement or I'm still not going to be able to work with them. And what Jesus says, he doesn't say, well, try to meet them in the middle and if they're not there, just forget it. it. Clearly, they didn't try. They did not do enough to make it work. So it, it's not worth your effort. Jesus doesn't say that. He doesn't say. Hopefully, they can meet in the middle, and if not, at least you made an effort, and you did a good job, kid. But what Jesus says, what Jesus tells us to do, is if they're not for you, they're against you. Work towards working with those people. Jesus says, let them be. Continue to work. Continue to try to partner in the gospel with these people because they are doing a good work. Don't ask them to change. Maybe you need to change some, and maybe they do need to change some. But don't tell them that just because they won't do it your way, you will not be involved in partnering and ministering the gospel with them. 
It's a climate that's difficult to navigate. It's a, a, a world right now where it is very, very rare that we see people on two opposite ends of the spectrum who are working together. Because it's so rare that one of them is willing to, say, to stop fighting for what they want and instead fight for what Jesus wants, fight for what the gospel wants, fight for what the church as a whole needs right now. And I'm praying, I'm pleading, I'm begging with God to soften my heart. And I hope that you will pray and, and plead and beg with God to soften your heart as well. That instead of being people who are waiting on the other side to change because we've already got it all right, that we'll put down, down our guard, we'll put down, we'll put aside our differences. We'll say, you know what, I know that that's probably not how I would have done it. And to be completely honest, I'm not even very comfortable with the way that it's being done by so-and-so. But because I see the good work in Jesus Christ that they are doing, because I see the good that, that can come from partnering with them in the gospel, and I see the benefit, the growth that the church may have if we come together and pull our resources together and do this as a team effort. I'm going to work with this person, and, and by the grace of God, the church will grow. And I hope and pray that God will help do that to me. And I hope and pray that God will help do that to you. So as we think about this over the next few days, as we think about this during a very divisive time, I ask a question that is it's going to be difficult for us. And it, it may be more difficult for us to do than it is for us to answer. But begrudgingly or not, who is it that you need to partner with? Who is it that you have differences with that you have, have in the past refused to share the gospel with? Who is it that you need to put aside all differences, lay down what's stopping you, what's the obstacle that lies between you and say, today I go to them and I partner in the gospel with them, not because it's something that's easy or that I want or that I like, but, but because I can't resist the growth of the church and the spread of the gospel. And I know that the best way to do that is through them.